Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and part three of our Blue Merle Australian Shepherd. So in this part we're going to start coming across um, this face and yeah we'll just see how far we get in the next hour or so. Everything you need as usual is listed down below. If you've got any questions let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and let's just get started. So I'm starting with my cold grey one. We're going to bring it in for this white marking. So the white fur, we're going to primarily be using the cold grey one. We've got the warm grey one in this part of the fur. So this will help give you that nice distinction between the areas. It's also not going to be as dark as the, obviously the grey markings. Just going to sharpen this. Okay. Remembering that I'm not going to do that yellow tone, so this would normally be like the ivory, but I'm just going to come in with the uh, cold grey one first. Just another layer. So I've done one layer, I'm just going over the top again with a cold grey one. I'm not pressing too hard, medium pressure. This will build up these layers. And then I'm going to go over the top of that with my uh, white, but I'm not going to press too hard because I want to bring some other colours in. This white's just going to help burnish and just blend a little bit. So I'm not pressing too hard. See, it's quite mucky is my white. I need to clean that. Okay. Taking my uh, light flesh, uh, Bay Dread, Bay Dread light flesh. Um, just along these edges, it's going to help get that nice blend. Blending over there. And then I want my ivory and I'm just going to go over the top with the ivory now and then back over into my white Nice hard pressure with that white now. Okay, so to the uh, one grey one, just going to lift that bit of graphite here and we're just going to start to build up the markings again. Just blending that down into that cold grey area. Okay, I'm just going to blend, I'll bring that warm grey one down this part of the face. Right, so I'm now going to take my warm grey free and I'm just going to start following the fur direction and darkening up this area. Again, making sure it blends into those other areas that we've already drawn in. And then I'm going to take my Caput Morton. 
So we're starting to get this tanned area blending into the grey again. Followed by the walnut brown down here. Over the top there. This is my warm grey too. I'm just going to blend. Over the top. So I'm now taking my uh, nugget because we've got some nice little brown tones down here and along this edge. So again I'm just mapping in any colours that I can see along this side of the face and my burnt umber as we come down into a darker marking. I'm just going over this bit as well because it'll help help with that nice blend between the areas. Then got my dark sepia and I'm just going to start to come in now and map in that nice darker marking, any darker fur. And the face. Again, following that fur direction, so it's kind of curving around that face. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my uh, warm grey free again and I'm going to go over the top of that with a cold grey one, nice high pressure with a cold grey one. And then I'm going to take my Payne's grey just going over some of these darker markings, just where I want a bit more of a bluer tone. And I'm going to bring in some of those little blue lines as well. Okay, I'm also just going to take my gold now. And I'm just going to start to bring that in with some details of this fur. And then back to my Payne's Grey, so just bring in this marking again. And along here. Going to my Warm Grey uh, 2. Bringing that fur that's around this white marking, obviously across the top of the head. Take my cold grey one again, just in here. And then my white. And then I can take my slice tool. And we can use the slice tool now to just bring in more detail. <sighs> Back to that Payne's Grey down here. And then the sliced one. OK, 
Okay, going back to my uh, warm grey free because we're going to need to bring in that marker across this nose. Okay, so going back to my uh, warm grey one again. And I'm just going to do that bit of fur up to where the ear is going to be. Okay, so this is the warm grey one now as the uh, base layer. So I'm just going to take my uh, nugget and I'm going to start to come in with this uh, darker marking that we can see. A few little markings there as well and then I'm going to take my burnt umber okay and just blending over these areas again so everything again as usual is just about building up a nice amount of layers to work on top of got my paints grey And then back to my one grey free. You can see I'm looking at the fur direction because it's changing as we're coming over this head. And take my cinnamon. And then my cold grey one. Back to my Payne's grey. Okay, I'm going to take my uh, cold grey four, is what I want. There we go. And again, I'm just creating some finer lines, different tones of this grey. So with the blue mill, you want different tones of this grey marking in the grey, which is why I'm using so many different shades of the warm and the cold greys. That's going to help give you that really nice, realistic look to uh, the blue mill colour. I'm going to just take my dark sepia now. And my put mortem just along that edge here as well. 
and then I'm going to go back over everything once again with the warm grey one. So you can see I've gone over these this area quite a lot, built up those layers. Really nicely. You can take the slice tool again and just come in, follow that fur direction. build up some detail like so back in now with the uh, warm grey wool and we're just going to bring it down the side here now We're going to start on that other ear very shortly. Just want to start bringing these markings in around this eye first. And you can see we've got quite a nice head tilt going on on this Australian Shepherd, which is quite cute to capture. Okay, so I'm then going to go over the top of that with my cold grey wool. And then I'm going to take my walnut brown and I'm just going to start to bring in where this marking is going to be. I need to bring in a base layer there, so let me just get my warm grey worn. Just going to bring this marking down a little bit more. Okay, so walnut brown and I'm just mapping in that marking. And it's going to curve around the eye. So I'm just what I'm doing is I'm using this walnut brown to just map in those darker markings of the mill, so the black patches. Very light pressure. Like so. And then obviously it's going to start, as we go into that ear, we'll bring that marking in a bit more. So I'm going to go over the top of that walnut brown now with my Payne's Grey. Medium pressure here. I'm just applying a little bit more pressure than I did before because we are, are going to make these darker, obviously. Just going to take my cold grey four and build up texture in here. And my uh, warm grey three. Okay, then my dark sepia, again back over these markings. So I'm using lots of colours in these patches because I want to be able to come over with the slice tool. As we've done um, previously. Oh, 
and then I'm just going to go over all of this with the warm grey one, uh, cold grey one. You could use the warm grey one as well. Just doing the cold grey one. It's what I had closest. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to take my nugget and then the beige red underneath here and then it's back to the slice tool just to create some details. so okay so we're going to start bringing in this ear so i'm going to start at the corner with the warm gray one as our base layer and again following that fur direction and just the general shapes that i can see so i'm just mapping in the darker so the gray tones the black patches is what I'm starting with with this ear and I'm going to bring in this area as well so this is quite a big area to start with but we're just going to do like we did before and bring in all the colours. Not worry too much about details because we can use the slice tool. Like so. So we're going to start off um, with my beige red. I'm just going to start to bring in any areas with a little bit of a pinkish tone. I'm not doing too much. Again, I'm knocking back some of that orangey tone from the white sauce. But there is a little bit of a pink tone. So I'm just going to bring that in. And then I'm going to my warm grey free. And I'm just going to start to build up now the depth in this grey fur. And you can see again I'm following that fur direction. Every time I'm building up the fur it's because I'm following the direction. Creating the depth in the fur and all the different colours. Okay, that's the one gray free. So I'm going to take the cold grey four, and the areas which are a bit bluer, so there's a bit more of a blue tone here, and in this ear. So remembering we want to create this ear to make it look nice and soft, we want the fur to look fluffy. And that's what we're going to do is we build up the layers, keeping all that in mind. I'm going to take my burnt umber, and mainly any areas that are going to be darker, I'm just going to use that as also like another base layer, I guess. Just more depth, and obviously any areas where I can see that brown tinge. I'm just going to bring it in here as well. I'm just going to bring that cold grey far in a bit more along here. So you'll see it takes a little bit of time, 
as we're building this up, it's all going to make sense. Just going over now with the cold grey one. Bit of medium pressure just to blend everything. Remember, I'm fighting against the tooth on this paper because I've gone on the wrong side. So don't worry if yours doesn't look as toothy. Um, we don't want it to look like this. <laughs> Okay, then I'm going in now with my Payne's Grey and this is where we're going to really start now to define that darker marking especially. And any darker areas on the ear. A dark sepia and I'm just building up the depth in these markings And then my warm grey one. Over the top. Cold grey four. I'm just going to bring these details in a bit more. On this ear. And my warm grey three. Okay, so that's the outside of the ear drawn in. Okay, I'm going to take my cold grey one now and I'm just going to start to bring in this bit on the side of the ear. And then here. Then I'm going to take my warm grey four and we're going to start to bring in a bit more depth down here. my cold grey four so you can see it's all about now just building up all those different shades of greys you're just following the shape of the fur the direction of the fur as we're building this up and then i'm going to take my dark sepia because i've got a darker mark in here on the edge of this ear or where, it's, where the ear's joining the face, there's a mark in there. And then I'm just going to bring in that dark sepia. Here as well. And then my warm grey free. Slowly get in there now. Okay. 
going back to my uh, one grey one now for kind of behind this ear so we're going to be darkening up some of this just going to be bringing in this one grey one first okay my warm grey free you can see i'm starting to try and just darken up areas where i can so it's looking like it's behind the slice tool will help us out as well when we come in with all those details Okay, the uh, Cold Grey 4 and I'm also just going to take the copper in here as well my uh, nugget I'm looking for the nugget and I seem to have misplaced it Oh, it's there. <laughs> the, the nugget, there we go. As we start to bring in some of the brown fur. And then over the top of that with the burnt umber. Walnut brown. Bring that one up brown in here as well. Again, just building up depth to the fur. And then my cold grey one. Over that. Uh, back to my warm grey one. So this area here is quite ginger. Uh, so we're going to get the tan colours back out, so I'm just going to bring that here for now. So this is like the base layer. To work on top of. Taking my burnt ochre. My nugget along this edge. And the burnt umber. Going back over with the burnt ochre. And then the put mortem. And then I'm just going to take my beige red and run that over the top of that tanned area just to help blend and smooth it all out. Back in with my dark sepia. And that's just to help with the blending here like so and then we're just going to do it again so we've got another curl here which is going into some darker area but we're just going to start with the lighter tones first so i'm just going to map in the shape of that curl or the clump of fur remember it's all about clumps and clusters of fur so this is another clump of fur that i'm drawing in I'm going to take my beige red over that. And then the burnt ochre. And 
and then we're going back to the burnt umber this is going to be darker underneath this area so we're going to start to blend this in and then the walnut brown and this is going to be nice high pressure with this walnut brown as we blend it down here I'm just going to blend that upwards Taking my beige red again And then that nugget just to help with that blend from the walnut brown into this lighter area So I'm just doing it clump by clump One grey free. I'm just going to take that one grey free down here as well. Okay, back to my one grey one. I'm just going to cover this entire area and then I'll build up these clumps of fur around. With the other colours rather than using this one grey one to map in the colours just going over some of these areas as well okay so i'm going to take my burnt ochre again and i'm just going to map in those gingery tones and then you've got that other clump of fur coming in around here So I'm going to take the burnt umber because this area here is going to be darker. The walnut brown. And then the dark sepia. Because we want it to be nice and dark in here. the nugget and then the uh, warm grey I'm going to take the warm grey three first I think we'll go darker than that but I'm just going to come in with the warm grey three first of all then the warm grey four And then I'm just going to get the dark sepia, but I'm not going to press too hard, just nice light pressure, putting in some details. And then back to that burnt ochre. And the beige red. And then you can go over the top of that. I'm taking the cold grey one over my greys. You can take the warm grey one if yours wants to be a bit warmer. Whichever colour you uh, want in your ear. Okay, back to my dark sepia here. I'm just going to bring in some more details. My cold grey four. And then in a moment, I'm going to get my slice tool. And we're going to use the slice tool to really bring this ear to life. Okay, so using the slice tool. And again, you're just going to follow the fur direction. And bring in some of those flyaway hairs, adding detail. So I don't look at the slice tool as removing anything. The slice tool is there to help us adding more detail.
So hopefully you can see how I'm just sort of bringing in little white hairs. Really bringing in the nice detailed work. And it's just adding that extra depth to the to the ear. Pushing elements of the ear behind each other, other elements in front. With a merle dog, it's the slice tool is just so useful. And then I'm gonna get my um dark sepia again, and then I'm just gonna push some of this behind those slice tool marks. To add that depth back in here. So I'm pressing quite hard there. Any the areas where I just need a bit more depth. I'm just going to increase my pressure with the dark sepia. Like so, and that is the second ear added. So it hasn't taken us too long to do that one. But I'm going to stop the tutorial here so that the um, sections are quite equal now um, and in the next part we will start on the nose and muzzle and then all that's left is fur so i hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial if you have any questions do ask don't forget to subscribe on your way out if you're not already hit the notification bell so you're notified every time i upload and i will see you all very soon bye everybody